Let's dedicate this segment to coaches as we welcome you back into One Soccer today. And let's begin in Major League Soccer. And yes, TFC new head coach Chris Armis and Ollie. Uh, if you're looking at him right now and uh, what would be considered a successful season for him at the helm of TFC, what would that be? they got to be in contention. Uh, it's as simple as that. I don't think you can ever say it's MLS Cup or bust because, you know, the nature of knockout football is, 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 you know, it can be random at times. It can be unpredictable. You don't always get what you deserve in those individual matchups. Um, but they have to at least be in contention. Um, I, I would go beyond just making the playoffs. I, I think they have to be looked at uh, as TFC have been for most of the, the past few years, which is as one of the strongest teams in the league. So that's going to mean Chris Armas getting the best out of his veteran players, making sure they're motivated, they're healthy. Um, guys like Michael Bradley, Omar Gonzalez, Josie Alstor obviously is the big question mark there. I think you want to see the young players, at least a couple of them, take a big step forward and, and be uh, more regular contributors than they were last year. There's a lot of exciting names in that group that uh, you know, I think they're ready for the chance and, and, and you'd like to see them show it. Uh, and you want to see a team with, with a clear plan and identity and style of play and all the, th the things that, that Chris Armas and Ali Curtis talked about in that first press conference. You know, you want to see a team that's fast paced, that plays entertaining football. That's what they're promising. Um, and, and it's now up to them to deliver on it. So those are kind of the individual components. But at the end of the day, this is TFC. This is a team that's still spending big money uh, on a lot of its roster. Um, they've got to be in contention for MLS Cup again. Uh, you mentioned Bill Manning's name. What was the first thing that he said at the introductory press availability? He said Chris Armas is a winner. So it's about winning, right? So winning the Canadian Championship, I think making a run, uh, potentially going on and winning, maybe, the CONCACAF Champions League, we'll see, and competing and contending, like you said, Ollie, for MLS Cup. He was brought here because the team isn't tearing it down. They're going to push on with this experienced group and try to win now. So I think the correct you know, answer, the right answer, is winning. <laughs> okay, then. No pressure at all, Chris. Uh, let's stick with Major League Soccer, and we know that Miami now has a new head coach as well, and that is Phil Neville, who's currently the head coach of the Eng English women's national team. What do you make of this move, Gareth, and, and David Beckham bringing Phil Neville on? I like it because what we're, what we're seeing more and more is clubs are hiring managers that they trust, whether it's the owner, whether it's an executive. You need to have that trust across the board. And there's obviously a previous relationship with David Beckham, with Phil Neville being Manchester United and England teammates. Uh, Phil's brother Gary said it on Monday Night Football earlier this week. He said Beckham wouldn't have just have brought in you know, his brother Phil if he didn't trust him completely. Phil has experience. He was on David Moyes' staff at Manchester United uh, with Everton. He was team captain there, of course, coaching the England women as well. So he's had experience. And, and Gary said it. Phil wakes up every day and he's thinking about football. He's thinking about formations, how to make players better. So I think it's a good appointment because if you have synergy between the front office and the coaching staff, I think you'll kind of reap the rewards. And it was a club lacking a little bit of identity last year. Yeah, pr pressure's going to be on him for day, from day one, though, just because of the nature of those relationships and how he got the job. And, like, we saw this when he took the England women's job, and that probably was more of a glaring kind of, well, you know, how does this guy kind of walk into this position with no experience of women's football, no experience of management? You know, I can understand why people are unhappy with that when there's a lot of young coaches, you know, working very hard for these kinds of opportunities. So that doesn't make Phil Neville a bad coach. That doesn't necessarily mean he is the wrong choice if you see something in him that you like. But I do think it does put a lot of pressure on him. And it's the same thing in Miami. This is someone who has no previous experience or knowledge of Major League Soccer. Um, it's someone who doesn't have a very lengthy resume, at least not compared to, to other MLS coaches um, as a manager. Um, so the pressure is going to be on him to deliver. And I think there's going to be you know, a lot of eyes on him and questions asked pretty quickly if he doesn't. Um, again, that's just the nature, I think, of an ex-player kind of seeming to walk into jobs based on relationships at times rather than based on what he's really proven as a coach to this point. Let's keep talking coaches. And Rian Wilkinson, as we know, has been part of Canada soccer for a very long time, both as a player winning uh, an Olympic medal and then coaching at the under-17, under-20 level last week, announced that she was departing Canada soccer. And now uh, we hear that she has joined, so switching on over, Phil Neville's now in uh, North America, and she has joined the English women's national team. But, uh, Ollie, were you a, a little disappointed to see that she's had to leave the Canada soccer program in order to get elevated? Uh, in her in her coaching career, would you have preferred to have seen her stay in Canada? 
Um, no, not necessarily. But it, like, the reality is, is that there's very limited opportunities in Canada, right? Uh, you know, Rian Wilkinson's been the assistant coach for the national team. She's been the head coach of the youth, the youth national teams. So where else does she go apart from head coach of the Canadian women's national team? You know, once she didn't get that job and they decided to appoint Bev Priestman, for me, there's, there's no next step for her to take in Canada. And so she has to go abroad. And, and I've got no problem with that. I think it's the same thing when you look at players like Jesse Fleming and, and Jordan Heitzma. I think we want, you know, the most talented coaches, players, whoever, um, to go abroad, to get different experiences, to prove themselves at different levels, learn from different people. And that can only be a good thing for kind of the talent pool um, in the Canadian program. So I, I think it's a really good opportunity for Rian Wilkinson. Um, I think you would hope that there's maybe a possibility she could stay on the staff uh, over the longer term if, if they do well initially. Um, and that's a great platform, as we've seen with Bed Priestman, you know, coming back and, and getting the, the senior women's national team job. So I, I have no issue with it. I like to see people going abroad and testing themselves, challenging themselves, uh, and wanting to learn in, in different areas of the world. Yeah, you, you cannot be upset. We haven't even seen what Bev Priestman can do with the Canadian women's national team yet. And Wilkinson was available. She could have been hired for that job. But, the, you know, the powers that be with, within Canada soccer believe that Priestman was the better candidate. So if Priestman is the better candidate, then that unfortunately means someone like Wilkinson needs to move on. That doesn't mean that she won't be back someday. And perhaps this gives her a platform, provides her the outside experience to bring it back to this country at some point of her managerial career and really do a job with the Canadian women. Yeah, she's represented the Maple Leaf for so long, but great to see, you know, her making the change and much success uh, uh, to her, but not, not too much not against too much the, success, the Maple Leaf yes. either. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not too much. <laughs>